Hello and welcome. My name is Steve Carreri and today we're going to be playing the blues. Check it out. All right, scenario. The band leader calls out a slow blues in a major key and asks you to bring the band in. The drummer starts to count and you need a hot lick to set the vibe. What do you play? <laughs> We've all heard those licks before. The notes are the same or very similar, but each guitar player featured in that video makes it their own. They impart their own sonic fingerprint on it that makes them instantly recognizable. And that should be the goal of all of us, all of us guitar players. And today, hopefully we can work a little bit towards that. So I'm gonna show you the lick in three different spots on the neck, and I'll show you variations in each one of those spots. I'm gonna show you when you can use this in a blues, where it works well, and above all else, I hope that you can find some licks to make your own. Tweak something here, change something there so that you make your own signature intro licks. Let's get to it. To find the first position we're gonna be working out of, grab the bar chord for whatever key you're gonna be in. Today we're gonna to be working out of A major, so we're up on the fifth fret here. These two notes on the B and E strings will be the anchor points for the basic lick. Once we know where the anchor points are for our index fingers, we simply skip a fret and use our ring finger to complete the lick on each string, like so. This is a great little box to work out of when playing a blues in a major key. The scale degrees here are the fifth, sixth, root, second, and then we go back to the root. Now that you know the basic lick, let's try adding a little bend in on that 7th fret E string before landing back on the root to give it that bluesy feel. Play around with how much you bend to give it completely different vibes. A little half step bend targeting the minor 3rd is a completely different feel than a full step bend targeting the C sharp or major 3rd of um, the A major scale. All right, so that's the lick we're gonna be learning in all the different positions today. Let's see now where you can insert this into a blues. So if you're using this in, as an intro context, like we are here today, you wanna land on the four count coming in. One, two, three, dun, 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 dun. That's where you wanna be. But you can also use this anytime you're coming from the four or the five back to the one. Anytime that one chord is popping up, so A major in our case, you can roll out any one of these licks and it's gonna work great. You can also try it over the four chord and the five chord and most of these licks will work. You might have to change a couple notes up, but trust your ear and see what works for you. Now let's learn that lick in a couple more key spots to give you a little more variety and a different jumping off point. This next one I think of as a Stevie Ray Vaughan, Texas flood area, um, but you'll see Buddy Guy, John Mayer, countless other blues guys use this as well. Let's dive in. The third and last spot we're going to be learning this lick today is what guitar players refer to as the BB King box or the major BB box or the second BB box. And it's a great spot to play over major blues. BB crafted a million solos right out of here and you can too. Now that we have the lick learned in three different positions on the neck, let's check out some variations on the theme. We're gonna start out in the same position that we learned the first example in, and I'm gonna keep the first bar, the first three notes of the first bar the same, and then change the second bar to change the vibe up. Remember, these are just ideas, and feel free to add vibrato, bends, slides, whatever you like to make these your own. But these are a good starting off point. A lot can be done with three notes, and this variation on an Eric Clapton lick proves that. We establish the major tonality with the usual walk up of the fifth, sixth, and root, and then immediately jump up to a more favorable position of the root note at the 10th fret B string, giving 
giving you access to all those blues bends in this little box, a la SRV and Albert King. The next variation is a straight up major lick that sits right in that four note box we learned at the very beginning of this lesson. We add the major third into the mix via a full step bend from the seventh fret. Try varying how long you hold your bend for different feels. Now things are starting to sound a little more aggressive as we mix in some minor with our major licks. We start off with a big bend on the 10th fret, bending from the 4th up to the 5th. After two quick hits back on the root note of the 10th fret, we slide up to the minor 3rd and quickly bend it up to the major 3rd. For this lick to sound more fluid, it helps you use your ring finger for all of the notes in the second bar. This makes a slide up into the bend sound almost like you're playing slide guitar. I stole this one from Mr. 335 Larry Carlton. And once again, we're going to be mixing some minor in with our major here. Once again, we are mixing minor and major by throwing in the minor third. This time we find it on the eighth fret of the E string. Notice how in this example and the previous one, the minor third resolves up to the major third before finding its way back to the root. This is a common theme in blues soloing and is a great way to spice up your playing. This is straight from the Buddy Guy performance at the beginning of the video. Once again, the first three notes of the first bar are gonna stay the same. We walk up through the fifth, sixth, and first. And wouldn't you know it, we have another example of the minor third being used as a passing note up to the major third. This time we get a really cool double stop composed of the minor third and the flat five that we slide up a fret into the major third and fifth before resolving on the root note. Seventh fret, D string. Here we build on those last two examples by adding another passing note from the minor scale. This time we add in the flat 7 on the 5th fret D string, and like with the minor to major 3rd transitions, we only touch on that flat 7 momentarily before bending it up slightly towards a 7 and resolving on the root. That bend isn't all the way up to the 7th, it's more of a twist to lead your ear to the 7. This one is straight out of the Stevie Ray Vaughan playbook. This lick is a little different from the first three as we use the fifth instead of the flat five and use a hammer on instead of the slide to get to our major third sound. If you really want to get your Stevie Ray Vaughan on, take this whole lick and change it up five frets so it starts off on the 12th fret A string for when the chord changes to the four chord D. This is a spicy little faux pedal steel lick that leans country. It might be a little too polite for some of the things you're working on, but it's a great one to have in the bag. Starting with the second bar, we bend the 12th fret B string up a whole step, targeting the third degree, and hold it there. Then, using your pinky and index finger, grab the 5th and 4th on the high E string before releasing the bend and resolving back on the root at the 10th fret. Starting off with another big bend. Another Clapton-esque move perhaps? This one sits right in the scale shape and relies on the hammer-on pull-off move to add some interest. This lick could be viewed as a more minor leaning counterpoint to the previous example.
Instead of bending that 12th fret B string up a whole step to target the major third, we bend the minor third on the 13th fret B string up a whole step to target the fourth. The 12th fret bend you can make minor with a half step bend or major with a full step bend as shown here. All right, that is all I have for you today. Remember, it's not just learning what other players are playing, it's why they're playing it. So use these examples today as a jumping off point to create your own signature licks. If one of these catches your ear, do a little deep dive and find out why that is. Is it because it lands on a major third, it bends up to the minor third, whatever it is, find that out and incorporate it into your own plane. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment, it really helps out. And if you wanna keep learning with me, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next week. Till next time.